Let us now discuss about another two very significant aspects of social mobility. One is the open mobility and the other the closed mobility. Depending on the degree of openness or closeness of the stratification system of any particular society, we have either open or closed systems of social mobility. Now, open system of mobility, as the name open suggests, is a system where the change in position is allowed, where an individual is allowed to change his position and status. An individual uh, may be allowed to change his rank. He might be allowed to climb up the social hierarchy. Okay, that is an open system of mobility. An open system of mobility is generally a characteristic of those societies having occupational diversity, a flexible hierarchy, differentiated social structure and rapidity of change. So, as we have already discussed, every society is stratified. If we take the example of Indian society only, we know we are stratified in terms of caste, in terms of class, in terms of gender, in terms of ethnicity, so on and so forth. But the two prominent systems of social stratification are the caste and the class. So, in case of open system of mobility, where a person is allowed to change his social position, we have to take the example of class. Class is an open system of mobility. Class position is not a position which is given to an individual by birth. No doubt he is born to a particular class, He's, he, he, he is born to his parents class, but there is always the flexibility that he works hard, he, he, he works hard, he toils and he can change his position. But caste, which is ascribed by birth, which is given by birth, which is hereditary, is very difficult to change. So caste is an example of closed system of mobility because the hierarchy, the ranking of the different caste groups in society is fixed and it is very difficult for a person to move up the social ladder. So therefore, because it do not give, the caste system does not provide enough scope to an individual to change his position, to change his status, it is a closed system of mobility. Mobility is open in two stratification systems which are flexible and encourages competition so that individuals compete and elevate their social status according to their capability as in the case of class. Class is an open system, it is flexible there is a competition between people to achieve the higher class and thereby you know uh, they, they, they compete with each other and try to achieve a higher class position and thereby their status also changes. Birth is not the sole determining factor of a person's status in this context. So in case of open system of mobility your birth is not the sole determining factor. You may be born to a particular class, but you have the ability to change it. Because here, achievement, capability, merit, skills, competence, achievement, all of these things count. You are able to change your position, you are able to change your status with your achievements, with your merit, with your skills. So, your status is not fixed in open system of mobility. It is not just that it is determined by birth and it remains throughout. No. You may be born with a particular class, to a particular class, but there is always a chance that you are able to change it. Thus, a person's position or status in this system is not based on heredity. It is not hereditary. You know, there is, uh, there is equality, there is freedom, a person is given the opportunity to achieve a higher position 
if he desires. So it is not just heredity or not just birth which determines a person's position or rank in the open system of mobility. Let us now move on to the closed mobility. As I have already indicated while discussing about open mobility, closed mobility is a system where it is very difficult for a person to change his or her position. Here birth plays the key determining factor, the birth is the key determining factor of a person's position. The position is hereditary. I inherit the position of my parents. I inherit the status of my parents and it is really very difficult to change it. Whatever I have I have been I have been given at birth or you know whatever status I am born with there there is higher chance that I die in the same status this status is ascribed here let us take the example of the caste system the indian caste system which is how many varnas there are four varnas in indian caste system the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Shudras. Okay? So, a person belonging to a Shudra caste is hardly given the scope to change his position. The system is very closed. Very, very closed. The hierarchy is highly rigid. The upper caste people would find it very difficult or are very reluctant to accommodate the lower caste people or to elevate the status of the lower caste people. So here it is very very closed. The position is almost fixed and there is little scope for individuals to change their positions. They, the individuals here becomes the member of the group or the category to which his parents belong. He acquires the positions and the status of his parents and continues with it throughout his life. The, uh, the position or the status that a person is born with, he, he, in most cases he die in the same position. There is hardly uh, any scope for him to change position in this closed mobility or in societies having closed mobility. In such systems, in societies having closed mobility, individuals are assigned their place in the social structure on the basis of ascriptive criteria as I have said, like the age, birth, sex, so on and so forth. However, there is no such, you know, it is not always so that, uh, you know, these systems are perfectly closed or these are highly, uh, I mean, or uh, they are totally, absolutely closed. There are no chances of changing position. It is not always so. There are examples of uh, more, uh, change in positions, but those are very limited. There are very few examples or there are very few chances given to a person, to, uh, a few chances that a person has to change his position. It's very limited. Most often it is closed. So, by open and closed mobility, what we understand is that depending on the nature of stratification, we first we have to remember that every society is stratified and depending on the system of stratification, depending on the nature of the system of stratification that exists in a particular society, there, uh, uh, that, that in, uh, determines whether a person would have the chance to change his position or not. The nature of the social stratification system in a particular society decides whether mobility will be open for a person or it will be closed. As we have already illustrated, for if we talk about Indian society and if we talk about caste-based social stratification, there is very uh, limited scope for an individual to change his caste position. 
But if we talk about European societies mostly dominated by class, class system, there are higher chances that a person would be able to change his position, a person will be able to change his status. So what happens is, in societies which are open, which have, where this, the nature of social stratification is open, there are, the, the, the mobility is open. The individuals can move up and down the ladder, the social hierarchy. But in those societies, where the social stratification is a closed one, where the nature of social stratification is closed, is rigid, the mobility is limited, as in the case of caste. So, having understood these two systems, let us now understand the difference between the closed and the open system of mobility. In an open system of mobility, an individual's position or status is based on merit or achievement, whereas in the closed system of mobility, uh, the status is ascribed, it is hereditary. Here, an open system of mobility is flexible, is open, it allows person, it gives ample opportunities to persons to change their status, but in closed societies, in societies where social stratification is very rigid, very close, it only, uh, there are, you know, very limited chances or a person hardly gets a chance to change his position. And uh, in societies uh, where there is closed mobility, a person's status therefore is more or less fixed. But in case of societies which have open system of mobility, a person can always change his status so it is not fixed. So I, I think you have understood the difference. The crux of the difference is that in open systems of mobility, one can change his position because here his position is not fixed or determined solely by birth. He can always change his position through his achievements as in the case, case of class. But in case of closed systems, it is birth which determines his social status. His social status more or less remains fixed. It is ascriptive and therefore there is very rare chance that he would be able to change his position in his lifetime. So this is what is the difference between the closed and the open systems of mobility. With this, let us move towards understanding what are the factors affecting social mobility. So we have by now learned that social mobility implies change in the position of a person. In some societies, person, a person is given ample opportunities to change his position, while in some societies, some other societies, the chance to change one's position is restricted or very, very limited. So what are the factors which affects social mobility, which helps in social mobility? The first and the foremost important factor is education. With the help of education, with the help of knowledge, a person can change his status. A person may be, bo may be uh, born in a lower class. A person may be born poor. Okay? But with education, with requisite qualification, with knowledge, he can rise to a higher position. He can achieve a higher position. So education is a very, very important factor which affects social mobility. Along with education comes skills and training. A person being skilled and trained becomes qualified to becomes qualified to get himself employed. If I'm educated, I'm skilled, I'm trained, I have a better chance in the job market. I have a better chance when I face interviews. 
when I'm being able to project myself as being trained, as being skilled, as having uh, the required requisite education, I project myself as a better candidate. And this helps me in achieving a higher position or this helps me in getting a job. This helps me in seeking a position somewhere. And that affects my social mobility. I may move from a jobless, unemployed to an employed person. I might move from a lower position to a higher position. From So the education, skill and training are very important. Especially when we talk about class. Okay, In societies which are stratified on the basis of class, a person can with his education, with his skills and trainings, change his position. Another factor which affects social mobility is achievement and failures, which, have, which we have already discussed in our discussion on vertical, uh, I mean on upward and downward social mobility. With my achievements, I climb up and with my failures, I climb, climb down. I may be born, I may be a child of a very, very wealthy family, a very, very rich, very, very prosperous, very, very well-to-do parents. But if I, I do not or I cannot achieve something in life on my own, I mean, if I'm not Taking, uh, I, uh, I do not go for education if I am not skilled, if I am into drugs, if I am into bad habits, I might completely ruin myself. I might lose the social esteem that my parents had or that I, I inherited through my parents. I might lose everything. So depending on my achievement and failures also, I either move up the social ladder or hierarchy or I move down. Either my social positions uh, move, uh, I mean my social position change to a better position or it falls down. Next is migration which is very very important because you see with uh, there, there are three more important points migration, industrialization and urbanization. These three are very important factors of social mobility and they are interrelated. Let us talk about industrialization first before going to migration. We all know that industrialization brought massive changes to the European society at, in the beginning to England and then it spread across the world. With the booming of industries, setting up of factories, people began to move from rural areas to urban areas to work in uh, factories and industries. They came to a new socio uh, social setting where you know getting a job in these industries or factories changed their socio-economic position. So their, their position changed, their socio-economic status changed, their lifestyle changed. So with industrialization began urbanization, growth of cities and which led to migration. People began to migrate. Their, their uh, changes, changes took place in different social institutions like family. There was once traditionally joint family system which subsequently declined with the formation of cities because families began to be uh, began to have a more nuclear structure. You know, so there, are, there were different kinds of changes that were taking place in society. Even if we talk about caste system in India, do you think this, the, the, uh, the rigidity of the caste system has remained till date? Definitely no. It has changed. In cities today, in the metropolis today, the caste status hardly matters. What matters is one's class position. The rigidity of the caste system, the practice of untouchability, you know, the practice of uh, isolating one caste group from another, you know, 
or the, uh, the, the tendency of one caste group to remain separated, to remain isolated or to remain in distance from another has changed tremendously. Today in cities, especially in cities, in towns where you know people of different caste groups work together, come together, eat together, sit together, the caste status hardly matters. Okay, so the, the in the rural areas, when once caste status used to uh, used to determine his um, position, used to determine his lifestyle, used to determine his social interactions, social relationships, have faded with industrialization, with urbanization, with migration. He the the person now comes to a city gets a new job, gets a new life, interacts with people across different castes and communities and thereby has a different social standing or a different social status. So these are different factors which leads to change in the position of a person. Either through education, through skill, through training, through uh, achievements or failures, or through, you know, or by migrating to another place and finding a better job, better livelihood opportunity, a person is able to change his status. So this is what we have discussed today, the unit 14 of uh, the paper Introduction to Sociology, where we have mostly talked about the meaning of social mobility, what does social mobility imply, the, the types of social mobility, the forms of vertical mobility and the openness and the closeness of social mobility and the factor that determines the, the factors that determines social mobility. The only thing that we need to understand here is that depending upon the, the nature of social stratification, social mobility of a person is governed. The societies which have open systems of social stratification like caste, people can easily change their positions, people can uh, people get numerous opportunities or they are given numerous chances, they are given avenues to change their position. But in those societies, where the social stratification is system is very rigid, which is where the hierarchy is very rigid, it is very, very difficult for a person to change his or her position. But with uh, the changing times, with the passage of time, with uh, modernization, with industrialization, uh, with the ample, uh, I mean, with the different avenues of livelihood that have emerged with people migrating to cities and towns, the concept of completely closed mobility or the, con the notion of completely closed system of stratification is gradually fading, uh, even uh, though it exists but its rigidity has somewhat declined. Uh, but yes, we have to say that in case of caste, the hierarchy still remains. Though a person in, uh, might get a chance to change his position, but that is very rare. Otherwise, the, cl the, the completely, the closed social stratification is also no longer very, very closed as for its definition. There is a fluidity and a person with his own achievements, with his own uh, skills, with his own merit, has the chance to change his or her position in a society. So that is what we have discussed today. We will come back with another unit next time. Till then, thank you. Stay safe.